All right, so I have three different layers now. If I click on the eyeballs next to the layers, starting with the fist that I brought in and, and made my working space around, that working space is eight inches wide, 10 inches tall, and 150 pixels per inch. And if I zoom in, I can see those pixels. How do I zoom in? As a shortcut, I can use Command on my Mac and the plus sign and Command and the minus sign to zoom out. But in Photop, because it's in a browser window, you have to click on your image somewhere, whether it's with your Move tool at the top of your toolbar or whether it's with your lasso, in order to zoom in and out on your image. And then when you want to zoom in and out on the controls, go ahead and click on your search bar and then your zoom in and out will actually shrink and enlarge your controls so that you can see what you need to see. How can you check your pixel resolution and the size? You can go to image, image size, and it will show you the inches if you drop down to inches, and it will show you what it calls its DPI, but we want to think of that as pixels per inch. Okay. Now we have these individual layers. Under each of them, we can go to edit and free transform. And we can use that to shrink them or enlarge them, rotate them. And arrange them in different ways. So I think I'm going to make the bullhorn bigger and put it near the bottom. <laughs> Let's see, I'm going to go ahead and mute some of the background noise. OK. Yeah, but any time with questions, feel free to unmute yourselves. But I still have to get some more images in here, right? And then we'll learn how to clean them up. So file, open in place. Let's see, I really liked this fire, even though it's pretty image heavy. So how do I get it so it's overlapping with the others? I'm going to change it from normal mode to multiply mode. Then I can do edit, free transform. Maybe I'll flip or rotate this a little bit. Looks like a big mess, so obviously we're going to have to erase some pixels, but we're still building. So now I have four. I want at least five, a minimum of five. So file, open in place, and I'll use the ones I drew in auto draw. Bring that in, rotate it, maybe enlarge it a little. and put it in and change it to multiply mode. Okay, so at this point, it's a really good time to save your work. So I have five separate layers that are making the image. All the layers are multiply mode except for the background layer, which is normal. Okay, now I'm going to add a new layer. So this is a new skill. We do that by clicking on Layer, New, Layer. That's the, the longest way to do it. And it will create a new layer on top of whatever layer you were on. And it's an empty layer. There's nothing in it. Another way to do it, the shortcut, is to click on the little, uh, what looks like a Post-it note icon next to the trash can icon in your Layers window. And that will just automatically generate a blank layer. What I'm going to do is drag that layer behind every other image. Just click and drag. And then I'm going to say Edit, Fill, and I want to fill it with white at 100% normal mode. So now I have a white layer beneath all of my reference images. And it will help me see if there's 
grays that need to be taken care of, anything else. Now I'm going to save my work by going to File, Save as PSD. And unlike Photoshop, it doesn't allow you immediately to name it when you save it. There's no save as. But by saving as a PSD, it's going to go to your downloads on your computer. And from there, I want you to grab it and rename it. Just like we did last week. So I'm going to call it SP21 for spring 2021. Once you've renamed it, you know that it's safe and it's a PSD file. And because I have Photoshop on this computer, if I just double click on that PSD file, it will open in Photoshop. And you'll see that it looks just like it does in Photopea with the layers and with all those options. And with tools, but notice how in Photopea, the marquee and the lasso tool are combined instead of separate. But everything is still there. All right, so I'll close out Photoshop. And I remember it's in my downloads, but now it has a name. And so that I can keep using this, I'm going to close this file and say open from computer. And I'm going to open the one that's in my downloads. So now it has this name. And every time I save it, it will save with that name. And if something happened to the computer, if I like lost internet connection, if I lost power, I wouldn't lose all of this work. So whenever we create more than one layer, we want to save it pretty quickly as a, as a Photoshop document, as a PSD. Okay, now the next step is we've got that big jumbled mess here. Now we get to move things around using transforming, using that free transform. And then we get to erase from certain parts because we don't want all the pixels everywhere. I especially don't want that with that fire kind of covering everything up. But to do that, I want to go layer by layer. The fist I pretty much want as is. But for this layer, I know there's a lot I want to get rid of. So in order to erase from it, because I brought it in from an outside file, I can't just lasso it and delete it. It says I have to rasterize it first. And so for this, just to make it clear to you, I'm going to zoom in on my layers so you can see. So when you bring in a layer from the outside, open in place, no matter what that layer format is, it can be a JPEG, it can be a PNG, it can be an SVG, it can be an EPS, it's going to come in with this little box in the layer preview. And that means it's what's called a smart object. And that means that it's the, the program is reading the file from an external source instead of saving its own pixels into its own memory. So in order to get those pixels saved in the memory of this program, I have to do what's called rasterizing it. And remember, raster means pixel-based. So I have to convert it into pixels within this program. So I I right click on the layer and I say rasterize. Then that little box will disappear and then it will allow me to delete. So let me shrink those tools. And now I'm just going to use the lasso tool because it's very direct. Take a chunk out of this white man's head and hit delete. Now there might be some of this black shape of the sleeve I want to keep. And that's fine. And if I want to zoom in on the image, and I can scroll just using two fingers on a trackpad, but I can also do that by holding down spacebar and getting what's called the hand tool. And that allows me to scroll when I'm zoomed in. 
and move around the image. I can get really nitpicky about it and really smooth out what I delete and cut out or not. And I can use command minus to, um, to zoom in and out. Okay, now I kind of like how these two look together. I like how this flows into this. But what if I want to get rid of just part of the image, like just that part of the fist that goes through the bullhorn? Well, then I'm going to go to the fist layer. So notice if I select the layer, it will allow me to delete from different parts. Now I'm going to use the lasso, zoom in, and just select that part of the fist. Okay, now this is important. You can only affect the layer that's selected. So if I delete from the bullhorn layer and click delete right now, it won't remove the line I want. Instead, it will remove pixels from the bullhorn layer. So I'll command Z. But if I click on the right layer, and you can use the, the eyeball to confirm, now it will delete that same area I selected from the fist layer. So this is a really important rule of raster and compositing, is that selections move with you. So if I select a shape, I can use that to affect any layer as long as I rasterize the layer first. So I'm going to go ahead and rasterize all of these smart layers by right-clicking on the layers, getting rid of that little square, so that now I can delete from them, right? But I'm going to build them kind of one layer at a time. And a shortcut for free transform to grow and to rotate is command shift T for me. It's actually control shift T for me. I have to remember that. The better one is just control T, which will get it get you to it. So even for a Mac, you do control T because command T unfortunately opens a new tab. And I'll make that mistake a lot because that's slightly different in Photoshop. But I'm just going to move these around. And then hit return. Because whenever you do a transform box, you have to hit return. And now I'm going to show you another way to select. I want to select inside these shapes. So instead of using the lasso and trying to really carefully select all those empty space pixels within, these shapes. I'm going to use a different selection tool, which is underneath the lasso tool and down the drawer. It's called Magic Wand. Magic Wand selects pixels that are similar to the pixel you click on within the layer. So I'm going to check contiguous. So it's only choosing pixels that are touching. The tolerance of 32 is a fine default tolerance. A feather of zero is fine. What Magic Wand is great at is selecting similar looking pixels. So I just clicked inside that shape and it selected all the pixels that are similar to itself inside that shape, whether they're white pixels or whether they're empty space, because Magic Wand is very good at selecting empty space. Now to add to it, I'm going to hold down Shift with the Magic Wand. And I'm going to add the other empty space within these shapes. So if I turn off the eyeball, you can see that those selections are still there. Now I can move that selection onto other layers and then delete from those layers because I have rasterized them. And I want to do that from every layer. So that now, when I build it layer by layer, that empty space 